All right, so I guess let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just thank you all so much for coming. This is great. Uh, this is the Graphic Guts Google Hangout with Luba Lakova and um, our contest winners here. And my name is Dion Aiken again, for those of you that don't know. Uh, I'm with AIGA Orlando, and I'll just be the host for the session. So we'll go ahead and get started. It's uh, basically Q&A um, for Luba. So uh, we'll start with Sarah Matthews. Uh, Sarah, would you like to start with a question for Luba? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, one of my questions is, I guess, um, when you read an article or see something on the news, do you, because um, your work is a lot of social, is social commentary, does it trigger something like that needing you to do something immediate, or is it something that you sort of sit and process and then, um, you know, have to really sit down and think about or is it like um, immediate? That's right. Mm, well, I'd like to point out that the most of the recent work that deals with social issues, it's entirely produced and published by me. It's not uh, done for a specific client, like an illustration or a magazine cover. It's entirely uh, generated by me. And uh, the inspiration really comes from life, not so much from something that I've read, you know. So um, this, I, it's a, like a totally like um, individual and personal work. But uh, this, this was published also five years ago. But uh, probably because of that, I got so much... Uh, uh, work coming to me from clients who have seen those uh, series, the social justice series, and they want me to exhibit or to create original images for them. But uh, uh, all in all, I think uh, the articles or the text that if I have to illustrate for a client, like commissioned work, they also get inspiration or motivation from life. So, so in everything I do, uh, my observations of life, my experience as a person, as an artist, uh, is the primary source for um, coming up with ideas and images, not so much abstract ideas coming from someone else in the form of a book or an article. And especially in these uh, uh, years, uh, like uh, since 2008, when I published the Social Justice Portfolio, maybe 90% of the work I do is entirely coming from me, not from a client. Um, commission work, you know. So I hope that answers the questions. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Let's be. Let's move on to Racine. You had a question for Luba. Sure. Um, are there any books that really influence your work or your process? Um, yes, absolutely. You know, in the very beginning of my career, like every young person. We are all influenced by the books we read, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I remember I was probably a teenager when I first read the uh, short stories of one uh, Russian writer, Anton Chekhov, if you know his plays. He's a famous playwright and writer. And uh, uh, somewhere in these stories, so I read something uh, like that he said, but there was one uh, of his uh, quotations that uh, simplicity is uh, um, kind of sibling of talent or something like that, that talent and, simpl and simplicity go hand in hand, that they are related. And uh, that made a huge impression on me because when I was reading his stories, I was always impressed how with just a few words he is able to build a character or to tell a story where another writer probably would take pages. He is able to capture that with only a few sentences. And uh, at that time, when I was learning how to speak with visual language, with images, I thought that this was quite a remarkable thing if you can master that to express a complex idea with um, with a simple image. And uh, that impressed me. And I have to say that so many years after um, this episode, I still believe in that idea. And it was still uh, like really something that shaped me as an artist. And uh, 
when I went to school and you know met already professors and other artists who influenced me as well, I kind of discovered that every person whose work I really liked uh, has found out for himself or herself this to be true, and every person does it in their own way. But this um, 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 effort to to be able to express complexity in a simple way came from a book, right? And I made it into my um, philosophy and my visual art. Then, uh, specifically about other literature that has influenced me, um, working in a theater for so many years, I've read a lot of uh, Shakespeare's plays and I had to visualize them. And this has impressed me enormously too, because I'm interested in humanity and uh, from all the books I've read and all the writers I've read, I can't compare anybody to Shakespeare who is able to present the richness of humanity in his drama. So, so that's another kind of connection with my work because I explore humanity and as in Shakespeare's work you see the good and the bad go together. There is never someone who is completely positive or negative and, and humanity and experiences in life, they're never positive or negative, it's a blend of everything. So, so that's one thing that um, um, kind of formed me and keeps forming me because I, I can never stop being amazed by, by that, by these books. And if we have to talk about books about graphic design, I followed those and you know in my studio I have a quite an extensive, extensive library of this. I follow them as professionalists. I cannot say that really my inspiration comes from there because again my inspiration comes from life and from other artists whom I admire. Um, so, so that's the connection with the books, you know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. All right. Um, now we have Moni. Moni? Oh, uh, is it my turn? <laughs> yes, it's your turn. <laughs> Hi. Um, well, I just wanted to start with, um, I guess, like networking and like how you would suggest is like a good way to like, you know, like brand yourself, especially as a student where, you know, your name is not known at all, perhaps. So that's interesting. <laughs> yes, yes. I completely relate to this experience because uh, I have to tell you also that almost in every uh, stage um, in life you enter certain situations like unknown, you know, so you have to network with people all the time. But when you are really just uh, starting, you may feel like you get lost in this diversity yeah. of brands and styles and uh, uh, so many, many things. Um, I felt that way when I was... Um, finishing school and not much even when I came to America, you know, even though I came invited for an exhibit, but you know, that the field that we are in is so huge, so it takes uh, time to, to get to establish yourself. But um, one um, advice, simple advice I could give is uh, to really be truthful to your ideals and it may sound very generic but it's really true, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, try to look for things that you really like and I think as you get older and more experienced you realize to if you keep practicing what you love practicing that you kind of get even closer to these ideas, you know. Mm, yeah. and ideals that you believed as a very young person. But, for example, you, you, I'm sure you'll ask, but how do you make a living? Because not everything right. that um, you pay the bills, it's not so um, dear to your heart. You have to do it sometimes, you know, because I think uh, you learn from everything. Even the most boring job could be handled in a creative way. and could be looked as a step to something bigger and better, mm -hmm. but you have to never give up uh, in searching of the right uh, project or the right job that you need, and you have to be really inventive because maybe a connection you establish from a boring project can open a door for a good project that you like. Mm -hmm. Maybe doing a job for a while could help you uh, kind of save means that you can self-produce something and that can open for you so many other possibilities that nobody can predict. Uh, 
I will not uh, fool you and say that I haven't done things that I didn't like, you know, but it has always been connected at least with drawing and I've been able to master and to to improve my skill as an artist and uh, I've always learned something from it, but mm -hmm. for me there comes, there came a period that I really feel like the most important thing for me is to express my own ideas and I take only clients that I feel are very close to me, but it hasn't been always like that, you know, so, uh, so just be true to your dream and if the situation requires uh, doing other things that you feel are not as close to you, do them if you need the means because mm -hmm. it's still you have to make a living with the skills that you have. But don't give up on the dreams. Don't let the everyday routine um, um, kind of extinguish the, the, the flame, you know, because everything then becomes too boring. And I, if you are bored and don't like what you do, I don't think you will succeed to do that into your middle age or later, you know. <laughs> so you have to, I mean, it's, it's a process and you get more experience than you... Um, understand things in a different way, you know, so, but that's what I can say, keep the, keep the ideal, but if you have to do other things, take them in this economy, it's kind of a luxury probably for, for someone who's just starting to turn uh, down jobs, so, just play, play like a thinker and like a passionate person as well, you know, combine mm -hmm. both, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. All right, and now we have uh, Max. Max, you can ask a little bit of a question. Fine, sure. Um, well, I, I was thinking about as images is, are so important in your artwork, what's your relationship or uh, how important is written words, uh, written language for you? I, I think if you prefer not to work with words or if you treat them specially. Right. Yeah, that's a very good question, and a little bit um, overlaps with the question that um, about the books, um, because my work is connected to language and inspired by language, so the connection is there. You know, um, when you see the theater work or um, some books that I've done, but my goal has been always to speak with the image. Um, so I, I have a very high respect for typography. Um, I think it's a powerful tool, but the image is superior. The image reaches people in a level that transcends uh, language and culture and politics. And, uh, uh, you know, in, in the U.S., in America, because this is like a huge country that speaks uh, one language almost, you know, like English is the, the language for an entire continent almost, uh, maybe that's why there is like a huge tendency in typographic design, but if you look at the impact of the work uh, in internationally, like the work that has the most impact, I've noticed from um, all these years of traveling and working internationally that the image is usually um, having an immediate uh, connection with people and types and types, if it's only type and if it's a complicated uh, message in type, it, the message does not reach the people sometimes. But, uh, yeah, you can see the samples of my work. I use very minimalistic uh, text. Most of it is with the image. But like I say, uh, I respect type a lot and very often I hand letter uh, words uh, because I feel that I need to be organically connected with the image. But like I say, in most of the work I do, type is more of a supportive element. Even though, like I say, I think I have a very good knowledge of typography and a huge, enormous respect for typography because bad typography can ruin even the most beautiful image and I try always to keep things together and to have a cohesive uh, picture uh, when type and image work together and are in perfect harmony. So, that's about that. That's great. All right, Joseph, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, Joseph. Um, you can ask your question when you're ready. All right. Um, so, hi, Lubla. Uh, hi. In your work, you have a strong, uh, 
just use strong, vibrant colors and very, very strong lines. And I just wanted to know, like, uh, it's very reminiscent of, like, it feels like a wood, uh, old-fashioned woodblock print. And I just want to know, like, if, if, what is actually your influence with that? Is it old-fashioned woodblock? Is it, like, a particular style that you grew up with? What? Mm, I wouldn't say, um, um, like, I've, I've done woodcut, you know, and, and I love the power of black and white. Um, to me, still, if you succeed to express something or make it look good in black and white, and then try adding colors, you probably will lose the impact, because the human eye um, has a special sensitivity towards black and white, and now with the computers we can add unlimited amount of colors, but that doesn't mean that the work gets more um, um, expressive by, by this abundance of, um, of uh, shades and effects and all that, um, but um, I wouldn't call it old-fashioned woodblock because there is a lot of artists who do printmaking and do um, woodblock and um, other printing techniques and I've done lithographs and um, other, you know, silkscreen, but I just wanted to, to say something special about silkscreen because when I first started to work uh, professionally it was for a theater company and uh, the first posters I did were silk screened and uh, I learned the medium and uh, this uh, deceptively simple way that the silk screen image looks but it has an enormous power to to grab the people's attention if it's done well you know and if the image is uh, simple enough to be silk screened but you've kept the emotional elements that make it uh, catchy and uh, people are intrigued by it. So another thing that I like is drawing and all these mediums, the medium of printing allows me to draw freely and to transform that in, in graphic forms. But if you ask me why, for example, I would use uh, strong contrast and strong silhouette contrast, Probably the earliest impression on me was the Greek vases, and they are not printed, you know, they're just painted, and that's how I work. Um, when I don't have the time to um, do a printing or a woodcut or a block cut, I just draw like that. And uh, uh, so the inspiration is it's not exactly from print, but from this um, specific way of drawing. And any type of primitive uh, um, art kind of uses imagery very different than the Greeks, but uh, simple and bold colors, and that inspires me. I, lo I love it. Uh, I never copy anything, you know, but it's that kind of um, um, cohesive influence in my head from all these things I've seen and that I feel allow me to, to express my ideas, because I want my images to be uh, seen immediately and to be easy to understand and these approaches that I see in these um, like um, samples that I told you I think they help me with that so but definitely the probably the most important thing is that I like to draw and that comes naturally for me I don't force myself to, to, to look like this or that it just comes the way it is you know so mm -hmm. I hope that answers a little bit yeah yeah thank you all right, and um, now we have Dina Mack. Uh, Dina? Hi, my question was, are you inspired by other senses other than sight, the sense of sight when you're working? Like you mean music? Or, music, uh, sounds, um, smells? Music, I would say. Uh, above, above all, and probably the only thing that really inspires me is the music. Uh, smell, I wouldn't say, but music definitely inspires me, definitely, um, in so many ways. Um, not only uh, the sound, the melody, but the text um, of specific genres, yeah, definitely inspired by that, and uh, gives me an enormous pleasure too, and it kind of helps me to relax when I have to deal with all these uh, heavy issues sometimes that, um, you know, when you deal with social stuff and all that, but it really kind of makes me feel good and um, 
I almost don't feel like that I'm working, you know. I never feel like I work. I always feel like I'm having fun anyway. But um, definitely music inspires me Im immensely. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm working on new projects that always relate to music all the time because I love it and I look for that just like a really like a way to relax, to, to enjoy it, just pure joy. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so I think we do have time. We can go through one more uh, one more round, and um, if you have a question, you can ask Luba, and if you don't, you just say, you know, you don't want to ask anymore, but that's fine. So um, we'll go back to Sarah, uh, if you have another question. Uh, yeah, I was just curious um, if you've received negative feedback on any of your artwork, and if so, how do you usually handle that? Is it something you kind of ignore? Is it anything that's ha that you've had to confront sort of head on and, um, you know, just what you do in the situation? Huh. Well, uh, I have to say that I almost don't hear that much negative contact, uh, but the social media is a good uh, place to test uh, your work and uh, I especially enjoy Facebook where I post uh, images when I just create them and uh, when I see the reaction coming from all these people from different countries uh, that gives me a good sense of uh, if the image reaches people and it has impact uh, and for some of them uh, I did one triptych that addresses the women's rights in the Muslim world. For some of the, these images there were some negative comments from people and I would say men from, from this region like Iran I believe or, or I'm not sure if it was Iran or some other Muslim country but that's understandable and uh, that's a good indicator that if someone um, decides even to write negatively about it that means that they've been affected and I want that. Um, and I reply uh, and and when I reply, I think the people who hear me probably they are a little bit converted to my cause because I haven't ha gotten any nasty exchanges never. Um, other than that, no. I mean, I'm not sure what people speak behind my back, and if somebody doesn't like me, they obviously don't invite me to exhibit or to work with them. But but I have so many. Mm, proposals for people who from people who like me that I cannot even concentrate on someone who doesn't like me but I'm sure that exists uh, what can I say um, I know that my work addresses issues that uh, are not easy to digest and uh, I hope that um, they affect people but I'm not sure if someone who for example uh, has been involved in corporate corruption will be transformed just by seeing my work. I think my work is uh, addressing the people who have the power to do a positive change, not the ones who try to damage the world or the society. So my goal is always for these people who are kind of lost with the work that I do to give them a direction or a question that they will try to find the answer and I also believe that probably everybody is capable of transforming so so even if you talk to someone who dislikes you maybe when they think a little longer about what you do and if they believe in you and in your message they'll be transformed for good so I don't carry any negative feelings for, for anybody so and I honestly believe people are capable of transformation and, and, and unless they've reached a point that some terrible damage has been done to them but you know, that's my belief and I'm hoping I'm right in that. Mm. <laughs> I think I agree. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see, Racine, do you have another question for Luca that you'd like yeah, to Yeah, sure. Um, what's your process and is it different? What's your process to your personal work? Uh, and is it different than the process you would take to, like, say, your client stuff? Well, um, the, the conceptualizing maybe is similar, but when I do personal work, I have a little bit more time. And uh, then when you do personal work and like the way I publish it, 
you take a lot of risk because you put into that a lot of your own money and uh, there is no client or anybody else who will say, oh, that looks good and I'm happy with it. You just take full responsibility for it. And But that gives you also so much freedom, which I like and I look for. But in terms of... Uh, the real, real process, how you make things, I don't think I'm, it's quite, it's different for me because my goal is always to say something and to say it in a concise way and to reach people. And uh, I've done many different things. For example, if you do like video for a stage production, which I did recently, of course the approach is different, but in the end my goal is the same, to to say something with this uh, image that is on the background to not be just a flat piece of uh, color or moving picture and and the good thing is that the collaborations that I have like this one for example are always with other artists who share the same ideas as me and uh, it's a kind of natural process but for example if a job comes from a magazine or some other publication I will read the text and I will be within the uh, size and the proportions and the things that they want me to do. But I would say almost all of my clients who come and commission me, they've already seen my personal work and they like it and they want something like that for their publications. So it's not like I have to twist myself and do something that I dislike. I, I, I must say I don't do things like that. Like when I have done work that I feel now it wasn't my best. It was probably early when I was starting and when I was taking almost everything that was coming. But I needed that also to learn the situation, to learn the business and to, to make money too, to support myself for every other project that I had in mind. But in, at this stage of my um, work and my career, I don't think I twist myself too much. You know, it's just naturally and it's kind of a... Um, easy flowing process and it's not much difference between working for myself or for a client. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Moni? Um, I actually had two questions but since we're short on time I really want to ask this. Um, would you recommend like I guess perhaps getting into another degree if you will like maybe PR or like marketing to like kind of like help you in like you know different areas of your thing like especially for like someone I guess going into like the fashion industry perhaps and I don't know if, you know if you can like yes. to me but well look um, I think it's always good to learn but I don't for myself I don't particularly think I would spend the best years of my life after I've studied for certain numbers of years yeah. to study something else, you know, because I've always been uh, kind of itchy to practice. I, I never wanted to, to study so much and when I was a student back in Bulgaria I had to go through a very long program of studying art and I didn't like it, you know, I felt like I, I want to do it, I don't want someone to tell me and it felt very repetitious to me and I hated it honestly. So I could not imagine myself going to, to another school. But um, uh, also, I'm maybe I'm wrong, maybe I didn't understand things, but look and read the stories of people who have really made a huge impact in society and in the world and, and succeeded in their business or art. They did not spend a lot of years at school. And especially when you start practicing, you learn more from practice than, than you learn from school, especially mm -hmm. how to run your business. I can say this for myself, you know, I never studied that. But just communicating with people, learning from them, it's something that school may give you, right, may give, give you some general thoughts and ideas, but practice to me is the best um, uh, university. Mm -hmm. And if unless you want to do something which is in the art world or design world but it's more of a promotion for someone else and then you feel like you need to learn certain things but um, 
On the other hand, I know that the economy is not good and for many young people is probably they don't know even where to enter and there's not enough jobs and I feel maybe now is a good time to spend some more time at school if you could afford it, you know. But uh, I, if you want to practice art and design and you've completed your studies, I would say go and practice and give it a couple of years and then you decide if you want to go and study some more, you know. If, if you feel that you need that. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I wouldn't jump immediately to another school. Um, that, that's my idea. I'm not sure if I'm giving you the right advice. I'm just thinking if I were in your situation. Yeah, no, I know no. that for sure I would jump immediately and uh, start looking. And, and like they say, you learn to, uh, like how to swim by, by doing it. And yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's, I mean, I, I don't know does, exactly yeah, it what. Does, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think also, look, for example, in my case, um, I, I'm really interested in kind of video and seeing my images moving. I don't think I would go to school for that. I will learn it by doing it. There are so many ways to learn things. Uh, uh, by yourself if you know what you want to achieve. Maybe you will take a short class or something, but I would learn from practice. So that's my advice, to learn yeah. from practicing your craft. For sure. So. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's, Max, do you have another question? Yes. I. What do, what do you do, or if you have any method, when you, your mind is blank, and when you are get stuck in a in a project, what do I do um, uh, when I start a project? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah. When your when your mind your mind is oh, like is creative down, work. You don't know what to do or, oh, or you get. Oh, hmm. Well, look, I've been doing this for so many years that I think I'm a very disciplined person. So. I almost doesn't. I almost don't have such experiences because I push myself, and I I know if something is, gosh, I cannot say. I'm all, I never in that in that situation. I always feel like inspired almost. Or uh, it has to be something extremely dull that will turn me off. But I would not touch it if it's so dull, you know. And uh, if I feel like nothing comes to my mind, I kind of enjoy that situation because that means that it's difficult and that makes me even more um, driven to, to solve it. If it's too easy, I wouldn't be interested. But if, if I'm totally lost, I would flip a book, I will just uh, think of something totally unrelated. I don't follow any specific formulas because I know that there are books that teach you how to come up with ideas and how to start from random thing and uh, do something totally unrelated and maybe an idea will pop up. But my approach is a little bit probably different. I will always think of a real life situation and that will help me to solve it because almost everything I have to, for example, do like an illustration is a depiction or a description of an event that has happened in life and I will try to put myself in that situation and think what would I do if that happens to me and uh, sometimes if it's really a very stubborn topic I will just let it rest and go to sleep and sometimes when you wake up in the middle of the night you come up with an image or something but uh, I never give up and uh, I especially like projects that are difficult to, to handle and some of my best work probably has come after a lot of struggle which in the finished product people cannot tell because they think oh it's so easy probably it was easy to do but it's a product of a lot of sketching and research and, and thinking too and trying to understand the subject before finishing you know just to understand the real issue to put myself in that situation and to me that's always inspirational because you always learn new things that help you in the next project you have to work on. So, so I wouldn't say I never give up and it's always interesting for me. Mm. But I'm not a fan of this uh, um, 
algorithms are like um, do this, do that, do this because you lose the, the surprise. I always feel surprised by each project that I have to handle and I don't think it's a matter of following a simple steps or rules that will produce a good um, solution or a good idea. It's rather you, it's discovering something for yourself every time. Alright, yeah. and uh, Joseph, are you still there? Yep, I'm still here. Alright, do you um, have another question? Yeah, I do. Um, so, what, what advice would you give uh, recent grads and students just starting to like, go out and get jobs and start actually designing or, or, or working in the field? Mm. Um, well, um, I think it's important to show your work to as many people and places as you can and uh, use the new medium for that, but don't underestimate the personal contact because to me that's the most important thing. Um, um, so just try to show your work, try to uh, enter uh, with work that you really, competitions with work that you really feel you've put your best skills and uh, if you have to do some jobs that you feel you don't like too much, maybe take them because you need the means that will give you freedom for something else and then you always learn um, from anything. But yeah, my advice is to um, to first also try to be really good and to take as much as you can from school and to really develop strong skills because there is no good luck in this world. I believe in, in presenting a good quality and then everything else follows. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. I don't believe in um, just having good luck but really offering something that people will need and people will notice the, the standard and the caliber of what you do. And uh, try to grow with every project you do because the learning process doesn't uh, stop with, with um, graduating or, or school. Um, but if you have to take a job that is not the, your dream job but you need to, okay, do it but, but take, learn something from it and know where the time is over and you have to leave it and move on to something else. Um, so just keep your ideal and, and it will you'll find your way, I'm sure, if you have that ideal, if you want to do something purposeful and you feel that you are the right person for it. Um, each each um, path, each story is unique, so probably also read stories of people that you like and see what that can teach you. Because that, to me, I've done that a lot. When you face some difficult situation and you feel uh, discouraged and you read how someone else uh, was in the same situation as like you and they never lost faith and that's to me inspiring that that has helped mm -hmm. me many times so yeah simple things like like that I suppose there is no nothing really um, hidden in that thing it's all open but to me the first and most important concern is to have a good quality work okay. um, and people follow that and people respond to that. Good. Thank you. Um, Dina, do you have a question for Luca? Um, my question is about collaborations. Do you collaborate with other artists or people in other disciplines? Or have you done that in the past? Or how do you feel about collaborating? Um, all of the work that you see that it's on these websites and web pages is entirely done by me. Um, in specifically creating the work, I, I don't collaborate. But graphic design, especially when you do a book or, or if you work in the theater, by its nature is a collaborative project, but each artist uh, does their own work. Uh, so it's not like, for example, a music band playing where people uh, help each other to create the emotion. My my work and I think a visual artist's work is more um, individual and more um, solitary or I don't know how to say. But um, I enjoy the collaborations with other artists in theater especially because I get inspired by that, by the words. But in my specific image making process or drawing or painting, it, I don't collaborate. And I, I don't see how I could collaborate. Um, 
but I exhibit with other artists, and that's a form of a collaboration as well. So, um, yeah. So I guess that. Uh, but definitely, I am inspired by by other artists, and especially artists that are not in my immediate field. So, so I look for this type of collaborations. All right. Great. So, um, if anyone has any additional questions, we can you can ask, and um, then after that, we'll just kind of do um, discussion, just go into an organic discussion, and um, so it's pretty open to the floor. Whoever, uh, Moni, I know you said you had more questions. I know. <laughs> um, if you want to ask one, one last more. question. <laughs> one more question. Okay. I know, and then I have to go. I'm so sad. But I'm really, really interested to know if you've ever done like work for like back home, you know, for like Bulgaria or like. I mean, yeah, you said you studied there. Like, do you ever plan on doing any projects for you know that? Because I'm, you know, we could use a lot of opinionated yeah. stuff. Yeah. There. <laughs> well, I I started working in Bulgaria when I was very young for a theater yeah. company. And I worked there for a couple of years, and then I came to the States. And uh, I've never been back, basically, to Bulgaria for all these years. So, yes, but um, it's probably because I got so busy here. And then um, there was a period immediately after the collapse of the communism when all cultural institutions had a very hard time. Yeah. Mm, so. I know that people really went through difficult times, especially artists. But in recent uh, years, I've never had any proposal to do work or, or do something there, you know. So I'm not uh, foreign to that idea, just I never had uh, the opportunity. Uh, so what can I say? To me, I think the good um, the good um, change that we experience with the new media is that really doesn't matter where you are people can see your work and I know that I have um, like young people from Bulgaria who follow my work and they feel that it relates to them like like people from Greece or Turkey they write to me that my social justice series relate to them so um, if a project comes and if uh, the timing is right and everything is right, I will be happy to work with, with um, Bulgaria. Just for now, there hasn't been such uh, such mm -hmm. an opportunity. But uh, but like I say, I think that what I do here reaches people from so many cultures. Strangely, right. yeah. me, my biggest following is from Iran. How can I explain? I have no explanation yeah. for that. Uh, so. <laughs> And uh, I travel a lot, and I meet people from all over the world. So I am Bulgarian by, by origin, but I live in America. But I think I try yeah. to share my message with everybody. So you know. No, yeah, I understand that. That's yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> um, and Sarah, did you have another question that you wanted to ask? Um. Uh, no, I mean most of mine were answered. Okay, I'm just gonna go down. Too. Can I make another question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Max. Well, uh, you you said that you felt inspired by theater artists, and I was thinking uh, that your posters have a lot in common with Polish poster tradition, and just wanted to know if you if you feel the same, if you if you like Polish tradition, if you feel that there's some kind of relation between their artwork and yours? No, definitely, definitely. Because when I was a young student, the first examples of poster art that I saw and I was truly impressed were uh, the, the Polish posters. And what I liked uh, back then and what I admire still now is that these posters were really done by artists, uh, people who knew how to express emotion or a concept in a very artistic, very emotional way. And all of them, all of these artists have their own personality that you recognize immediately, which cannot be said nowadays for a lot of practicing poster designers or, or any type of artist because we use the same software and that makes us look uh, quite identical. Mm. Some people look quite identical, but uh, 
Um, these works definitely impacted me a lot because of this artistic quality and because of the emotional impact. And I was definitely looking in my own work to, to be able to do that and trying to find my own visual language, of course. But, but yeah, definitely I love it. And, and, and Poland and uh, Bulgaria, when I was growing up, they were through the same uh, political system, the communism, so the people shared a lot of uh, common um, feelings about the injustices of that totalitarian state and all that. So definitely I felt very closely connected to them. Um, and, and still, I mean, now this generation of Polish poster artists um, are gone. They, they just don't work. Maybe there is one or two or three people. And I unfortunately cannot say the same words for the new uh, breed of digitally uh, vectorized uh, posters. I'm sorry, but I really feel that, that they lack that power. Um, but, you know, the world changes and there are new mediums and poster maybe becomes more of a museum art because before these beautiful prints were on the street, they were not just for collectors or for exhibitions. So things change, new things develop. Um, I definitely think, as in general, that this dependence on technology in, in image making is kind of unifying people and uh, um, making them look the same, and uh, that's not good. I appreciate the technology for what we do now because it allows you to connect with people, but when you want to be an artist or you want to move somebody, you have to put something personal, and the human touch is probably one of the most personal things. And if you let everything run from the computer, from the vector, from the program, I don't think you could do that. You know, that's my feeling. Especially especially the vectorized graphic art to me is kind of cold. But mm, depends on the artist and depends how you use it and depends on the message too, you know. But definitely no, no doubt that I was very strongly influenced by the Polish poster school. Yeah. All right. Um, Joseph, did you have uh, another question or anything? That's, uh... um, actually, yeah. Um, uh, now, you, you do a lot of, like, social – you talk about social injustice and equality in, in your work. And I just want to know how does – like, have you ever had a, somebody have a person – like, get in contact with you and let, let you know that your work's affected them? Have you ever seen your work – do the transformation of people firsthand, or have you seen your work like influence people in in the way that you intended to, or maybe not in the way you intended to? Um, I have to say that I receive a lot of um, responses and emails and comments about my work, definitely a lot, and that's one other reason that I really like the, the social media because of that immediate reaction to the work which I didn't know could be so strong. Uh, I remember before uh, the email um, people would occasionally send me letters or faxes and I was at that time in the very beginning of my practice in the US I imagine for more established artists or, you know, think about music, um, the fans and the letters that the fans said. Back then, before the new media, people also were getting a lot of responses. But for me, that was occasional back then. But as I advanced in my career and when the new media, the social media developed, I find this really great to, to see people's reactions. So I do get responses. and. Um, you cannot expect just from a picture or a visual art or any type of art to make a significant immediate change in people's mentality or in, in the world. You know, it cannot stop the wars or, or fix the economy. But change is there because people see it through through you and they ask a question. It, it changes it step by step. So um, I, I would never expect my images to, to, to make a dramatic immediate change, but I'm absolutely positive, especially when I see how the, the social justice series are being um, discussed in high schools. 
when you are really at your age where you are the most easily impressed by things and I see sometimes they send me emails from these discussions of very young kids and I'm shocked that they understand what I'm trying to say um, because I've thought that this is more for adults so so definitely I'm positive that art has an impact just the way I'm impacted I told you my experience with uh, uh, Chekhov if art didn't have that impact that wouldn't change me so or I'm being changed by listening to music of people who artists who I like so definitely has impact but it's not like like an impact and I really don't know what in the world has such a big impact because think about the economy is there a magician who can fix the economy no it's a matter of process that we have to change fundamentally things but everything takes time even the economists or the scientists cannot change things as fast as they want so so why do we ask from art to change because some people say it's now mm, not worth, uh, worth it to do art that deals with social issues because art will not change anything not right they don't understand how art works and they don't believe in, in um, art in a way so yeah I hope that answers a little bit yes it does thanks yeah. <laughs> thank you it's just a, um Dina, did you have an... Oh, I lost you. Hello? Can you hear oh, me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really don't, other than um, maybe talking about your uh, choice of color and palettes and your thought process with that, is it related to the work that you're going to create? Is it something... I lost you. Um, you're asking about the choice of color? Yes. Okay. Hello. Is here now? Hello. Oh, I love. I don't. Uh, she asked me about the choice of color. Okay. Um. Let's see. Dina, can you exit and then uh, join back in the call? Let's see. Oh. Mm, do, okay. do you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. And you guys hear me? The rest of you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think she asked me about the the choice of color, and um, mm, probably if I use this high contrast in my work is because of the visibility that I'd like to achieve. Um, because poster again is meant for us for the street to be uh, perceived in um, a very limited time. Oh, do you hear us? You hear? Oh, she can. Oh, she, yeah. Uh, but but uh, so that's why I look for these contrasts um, and bold shapes so the work is easily seen. Um, and uh, when I started working as an illustrator here in the U.S., I kind of saw for myself that this. Uh, um, extreme contrasts w work well in the printed page and now on the internet as well uh, because again the human eye is, is driven to this contrast and when the shape is simple but intricate and something happens you see something simple but something else happens on the second view it works so I want people to notice my work I want them to, to stop for a moment to, to see it another time and the color use, the use of color is a big element, but the colors I use are not just randomly selected. They always uh, kind of build that emotional impact and con contribute to the whole um, um, look of the work. And black and white, like I said, I really like, but when I add color, things get more passionate, and more emotional, and I love that. Um, so... I'm not sure if that I heard the question completely, but that maybe answers a little bit. All right, and Dina, you might be on mute uh, also. Am I, am I back? <laughs> yes, you're back now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my my dog came in for a while. Did you see that earlier? <laughs> uh, All right. That's it. Lots of questions for me. Sounds good. Okay, um, and then. Uh, we can kind of open it up for any discussion. Um, Luba, if you have any announcements or um, exhibits or just anything coming up that you'd like to share.
um, to do so um, at this yeah. point. So. Okay, well, first, thank you again. The questions were great, and uh, if you think of anything else, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, I'm now in a super busy time. Uh, this um, Friday, I'm going to uh, Pennsylvania near Harrisburg because I'll have an exhibition opening there. Um, and uh, the show is called Graphic Gods, as our conversation today. And this is also the name of my new book of social commentary art, where I will include a lot of um, images that deal with these heavy issues. But I hope I presented many of them with some humor and with, uh, in an unexpected way that um, makes it easier to digest. And a lot of the process behind these images as well. So. Um, that's um, what I'm doing then in, in this week. And then um, in the next two months, I'll be going to Bolivia for another exhibition quite big, like 55 pieces. Um, then trips for group exhibitions all over in Italy. Later on, I'm going to Hong Kong. So it's all related to, to exhibiting work. Um, so, I love it, even though sometimes I feel exhausted, but I love it, and I love this immediate contact of the work with the people in, in a gallery space, in a real space. I love the internet, but the work, when you see it and experience it in real, has a different um, dimension and a different um, it, it, it response from the people. So, so that's the, the most immediate thing, and the book is coming. Uh, by the end of this year, which is very soon. So um, join me on Facebook or, or, or you know, just uh, Google and it will be uh, on Amazon and in other places. Luba, um, I have a question. It, uh, yeah. I have a question for you, Luba. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yes. How, uh, in terms of curating some of these shows, how important is it in terms of, um, you know, like presentation, and I saw in one of your exhibits that you had your artwork on uh, mannequins or, you yeah. know, you present it in a very interesting way. How does that help right. in the overall concept of your shows? And um, Right. The, the yes, definitely. I'm sorry that I don't have these images to share with the people who haven't seen my work, but uh, when I have more control, and that's most of the time, over the gallery, and when the gallery has a little bit more unconventional thinking and budget, I always try to come up with the concept for the entire exhibition, not just to put the images on the wall. And some people think differently because they say each image is so strong that they need to be left alone and quiet uh, to speak to the people. But I like it when you do something with the space and when the space reinforces the concept because most of the shows I do are linked, the images are linked um, uh, around certain theme. So this exhibit that you saw was uh, mannequins and they were sandwiched with um, work with prints and it was called humanizing design and uh, the idea was the contrast between the perfection of the mannequins and the images that were not that perfect and they usually speak about uh, very painful and uh, serious issues so the idea was that humanity does not come from the perfect proportions but from these feelings and emotions that you put in, in the things you do. Um, so, yeah, I enjoy that, I, and I look for that, and uh, to me that makes it more interesting and um, gives like a second life to the images and unites the work in a new interesting way. Um, for this exhibition that, uh, that will open uh, now in uh, Pennsylvania, it's a nice gallery, but uh, they also asked for a lot of work and different type of work. and. Uh, since it's called Graphic Gods, I put all images that, most of the images that will be in the book, and it's displayed in a more traditional way, but the gallery was also not that big, and uh, it, it wouldn't look um, good to try to come up with some other concept. Um, it's kind of dense with, with work, but uh, I mean, that, that's fine too with me, because in the end it's important to, for people to see the work in its real uh, size. 
um, and when the work relates and when the colors are um, arranged in the gallery in the good way, it also has a nice uh, overall feel. But my, my passion is really when I'm able to do this other stuff where, where I play on another level and use the space in a more creative way. That's great. Um, and also, just some of your work, I know you said that music was a big inspiration. Uh, oh, I forgot but, to mention yeah. the most, yeah, yeah, one other thing, I forgot to mention, because you mentioned music, uh, actually the first poster I ever did in Bulgaria so many years ago after I finished school will be on display at the Museum of Modern Art um, opening on October 5th, and that relates to music too, and uh, I'm thrilled and an honored that also the curators decided to use these images, the featured image for the entire exhibition, and it's one guitar pierced with uh, daggers. So that relates to music as well. Uh, but, but yeah, I just forgot that this is also a major thing in between the other things, to be part of this exhibit, which will be on display for one year in, at MoMA. So yeah, wow, that's good. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, but what did you ask me about music? Uh, it's just some of your um, art for, I know you've done uh, jazz uh, covers and things yeah. like that. So it's not just uh, social commentary, but there's also... Oh, no, not at all. And, and if you like, I'm, I'm, my biggest uh, passion probably in, in music maybe is blues, you know. That, that's something that inspires me immensely. And it is music, right, but it's life because it deals with all these issues, personal and, and outside of you. And really, if there is an ideal for me... Um, in music that probably reflects my ideas in visual art is probably blues as a form. And uh, I think Jimi Hendrix said that blues is easy to play but hard to feel, you know, and I want that exact thing for my work to look like it's easy to make but it has a lot of feeling and emotion. So, um, I'm working on a cycle inspired by blues music but I haven't yet published or posted anything because I'd like the whole set together and because it's too many things at the same time so I don't want to release yeah. too many <laughs> <laughs> projects at the same time but I'm constantly working and, and moving from one thing to another um, try to keep interesting for myself what I do um, but I think the timing is right for a book that deals with social commentary art because that's what people everybody talks and thinks about and about that and everybody is affected by that so I think it's right to to show that again and to give it a shape as a book with more explanation so yeah but blues too is right because blues is part of life so right. so that will come next yeah <laughs> maybe I'll come up with a nice exhibition and we'll do something even with musicians, I don't know, but something different than just showing images on the wall. That could be a collaboration as well. <laughs> oh, I would love to. I'd love such collaboration, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, does anyone else have any uh, questions or just any last-minute comments or anything like that? Um, All right. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank okay. you. Okay. Um, Thank yeah. you so much for spending the time. Thank you. And keep in touch. And, um, you know, I'd love to, to see what you do because I learn from everybody else's work, you know. So it, I'm a very curious person. To, to <laughs> yeah, and you can connect with her on Facebook. You're on Facebook as well. Yeah, definitely. Let's keep in touch. So we're yeah, all definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Diane, so much. No Thank problem. You. Thank you. Okay, bye. Good night. Um, okay. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.